Okay, in our video series of ECG interpretation made easy, in this video we are going to talk about atrial rhythm. Remember, normally in heart, electrical activity is controlled by SA node. SA node produces electrical signals and they cause contraction of the atria and these electrical signals travel through the internodal pathways to AV node and AV node send these signals to the ventricles and causes contraction of the ventricles. That is called as a sinus rhythm. A sinus rhythm is the one which is controlled by SA node. What happens in atrial rhythms is that there is an ectopic focus present in the atria and that ectopic focus is actually producing electrical currents. It is generating the electrical rhythms and it is causing contraction of the atria as well as contraction of the ventricles. That rhythm is not a sinus rhythm because SA node is not causing this electrical rhythm. Actually an ectopic focus present in the atria is causing this electrical rhythm that is called as atrial rhythm. That is not a sinus rhythm. Atrial rhythm is a rhythm that is generated from an ectopic focus present in the atria. Now coming to the causes of atrial rhythm, what causes these ectopic focus? Increased automaticity, certain cells of the atria have increased automaticity. Normally, the most rapid firing rate is of the SA node. The cells of SA node have increased chances of depolarization and it runs the heart at a certain rate. But in ectopic focus, in atrial rhythms, what happens is that that ectopic focus generates more electrical activity as compared to SA node and it causes contraction of the atria and takes over over the electrical activity from the SA node that is due to increased automaticity or it can be due to triggered activity in triggered activity what happens is that sometimes myocardial uh, cells in the atria get injured due to myocardial ischemia and MI or hypoxia and those injured myocardial cells have increased tendency to trigger depolarization that is called as a triggered activity or sometimes digitalis toxicity can also cause this triggered activity Although digitalis is a wonderful drug, but it can sometimes in overdose cause severe arrhythmias. And the third important thing is re-entry phenomena. What happens in re-entry phenomena is that the damaged myocardial cells have a re-entry circuit. Basically, these damaged myocardial cells are producing increased automaticity, increased electrical currents and those electrical currents spread in the atria and they, they form a loop and they again these electrical signals activate that ectopic focus and causes production of more electrical current. So, there is self-activation of that ectopic focus through a re-entry circuit, a loop that is producing current and those same currents are actually activating more production of currents. That is that loop, that re-entry phenomena causes atrial rhythm. So, atrial rhythm is a rhythm that is from an ectopic focus in the atria, it is not from the SA node. Now, there are many types of atrial rhythm. Atrial rhythms include premature atrial complexes, atrial tachycardia, wandering atrial pacemaker, multifocal atrial tachycardia, atrial flutter, atrial fibrillation. Now, we will discuss first of all premature atrial complex. Now, coming to premature atrial complexes, premature atrial complexes is an atrial rhythm. Atrial rhythm, rhythm that originates outside of the SA node within the atria. Now, the causes of premature atrial complexes include the same cardiac diseases, anything that injures myocytes predisposes the heart to develop these type of arrhythmias, coronary or volvular or pulmonary pathology, drugs like digitalis or electrolyte imbalance. Now, this is a picture showing electrical anatomy of the heart where SA node normally produces electrical signals and causes contraction of the atria and ventricle. But what happens in premature atrial complexes is that there is an ectopic focus that is producing electrical current and that electrical current is actually countering the SA node and sometimes it takes over the electrical activity of uh, SA node and it blocks the signal of SA node and it produces a separate current. So, what you will see on ECG is that when SA node produces electrical current, there will be a different P wave. But when this ectopic focus will produce uh, electrical current, there will be a different morphology of P wave. Now, let's say if an ectopic focus is present over here, normally when SA node produces current, it moves in this direction in this direction but when an ectopic focus is producing current it will move in the opposite direction it is countering the electrical activity of the SA node now in such case the P wave morphology can be inverted the P wave can be inverted because the current is moving in the opposite direction so in lead 2 if you see the P wave P wave might be inverted but if it is present in another location P wave can appear like this half uh, in upward deflection and half downward deflection. P wave can appear like this as well. 
P wave can even appear like a normal P wave. So on ECG, what you will see is that there will be different morphologies of the P waves because there are different foci present in the atria and they are causing depolarization. And this is an indication if you find different morphologies of P wave on ECG, it is an indication that some ectopic focus is there which is causing production of abnormal electrical currents. And remember an important point, the QRS and T wave will be normal. Despite having these abnormal P waves, despite having these different morphologies of the P waves, the QRS rate will be normal because the problem is in the atria. The problem is not in the ventricles. Whatever signal is coming from the atria to the ventricles, the ventricles are contracting. Whether they are coming from the SA node, whether they are coming from the ectopic focus, the ventricles are contracting. So the QRS complex and T wave will be normal, but the P wave will have different morphologies. Now, if you look at this ECG, this ECG is showing premature atrial complexes. These arrows are basically pointing out toward the premature atrial complexes. Now, this is a normal sinus rhythm produced from SA node. Look at the P wave over here followed by a QRS complex. But after this sinus rhythm, ectopic focus generates electrical activity and produces an abnormal morphology of P wave. Look at the morphology of P wave from an ectopic focus followed by a normal QRS complex. After this, this is another uh, a beat from the sinus node. Now this is another beat. Look at the P wave morphology over here. This is a beat from the SA node. SA node is firing now. After this, another premature atrial contraction where the ectopic focus is generating electrical activity. Now look at the P wave over here. This is the electrical activity generated from the ectopic focus. Another normal SA node beat followed by a premature atrial complex and look at the abnormal morphology of the P wave. So this is how you can easily differentiate that this is a normal SA node uh, beat and this is an abnormal morphology of the P wave. QRS complexes are the same. The problem is in the atria therefore the P waves are abnormal. So, so these are all the premature atrial complexes. Now if you notice one thing that after each and every premature atrial complex there is usually a pause. After every premature atrial complex, there is a pause. After every premature atrial complex, there is usually a pause. The RR interval is longer after every premature atrial contraction. The RR interval is longer after every premature atrial complex. So there is a pause after every premature atrial complex. Now if you notice one thing, that if there is a pattern, a pattern that after, after every sinus beat, there is a premature atrial complex and after every premature atrial complex, there is a sinus beat, sinus beat followed by a PAC, sinus beat followed by a PAC. So this is called as bigeminal PACs where every second beat is a premature atrial complex and uh, the first beat is a sinus beat. After that, there is one PAC that is called as a bigeminal PAC. If after every two normal sinus beats, the third beat is a premature atrial complex that is called as a trigeminal PAC. If after every two normal sinus beats, the third beat is a premature atrial complex that is called as a trigeminal PAC. Now, if you look at this, this is a beautiful rhythm. This is a normal P wave. This is a normal P wave. And look at the premature atrial complex and look at the P wave. This is a normal P, a normal uh, sinus beat, a normal sinus beat. Look at the P waves and look at the P wave of a premature atrial complex. That is called as a trigeminal pattern. In the quadrigeminal pattern, what happens is that after every three normal beats, there is a premature atrial complex. After every three normal sinus beats, there is a premature atrial complex. After every three normal sinus beats, there is a premature atrial complex. So these, these are the normal sinus beads from the SA node. Look at the P waves over here and look at the P wave over here. Look at the P waves from the normal sinus node and look at the P wave from the ectopic focus. That is the premature atrial complex. Look at the P wave over here. These are the normal sinus beads. If after every third normal SA node beat, if there is a premature atrial complex, that is called as a quadrigeminal PACs. Now let's practice some ECGs. If you look at this ECG, in this ECG, you can easily appreciate, if you look at the P waves, you can easily tell that these two are the premature atrial complexes because these, the morphology of P wave over here is different from the morphology over here. The normal P wave, as we discussed in our rhythm determination video, is round, upright, 
and this is a normal sinus bead and this one is a premature atrial complex and if you look it is after every two beads so when a PAC is after every two sinus beads that is called as a trigeminal PAC. Now let's calculate the heart rate. If you calculate, if you look at it, this is an irregular rhythm where the RR interval over here is shorter as compared to the RR interval between the two sinus beats. Because as I said, after every PAC, there is usually a pause, a pause after the uh, PAC. Now if you calculate the heart rate, we have one, two, three, three and a half, 300, 150, 100 and almost uh, 80. 85 beats per minute. This is an irregular rhythm. The P waves are married with the QRS complexes because each P wave is followed by a QRS complex. There is no such P wave which is not followed by a QRS complex. So P waves are present and they are married to the QRS complexes. If you look at the PR interval, the PR interval, if it is within one large box, that is a normal PR interval. Now, if you look this PR interval, the PR interval is within one large box, then it is a normal PR interval. If you look at the QRS complexes, QRS complexes are narrow, their width is less than three small boxes, they have sharp pointed angles and that is a normal QRS complex. Now I have discussed about QRS complex, PR interval, P waves, regularity, heart rate calculation in detail in my video on rhythm determination. If you want to go into more detail, if you want to learn these things, we have already discussed in, in our video on uh, rhythm determination. The link of that video is given in the description below. Now the interpretation of this ECG is a sinus rhythm because because these QRS complexes are followed by the P waves with premature atrial complexes and this is a basically a trigeminal pre uh, premature atrial complexes because after every two sinus beads there is a PAC. Now what you should do is that you should pause the video, take a piece of paper and a pen and solve this ECG. Solve these ECGs yourself till the time you don't solve these ECGs you won't learn anything. These these are very volatile uh, ECGs and you will easily forget everything. So when you practice ECGs, the more you practice, the more you master it. Now, let's look at this ECG. Let's look at the P waves. We can easily tell that this one over here is a premature atrial complex because normally the P to uh, the RR interval is normal and all of a sudden there is an irregularity and it has abnormal P wave associated with it. So it is a uh, premature atrial complex. And these are all the normal sinus rhythms. Let's calculate the rate. Uh, so we have 1, 2, 3, 300, 150, 100 and almost 75 beats per minute. And it is an irregular rhythm. All the P waves are followed by QRS complexes. So all the P waves are married to QRS complexes. There is no such P wave which is not followed by QRS complex. Look at, let's look at the PR interval. The PR interval is within one large box. It is, uh, it is normal when it is less than one large box, it's normal. Let's look at the QRS complexes. The QRS complexes are narrow, sharp, uh, steep angles, pointed sharp ends. So it is a normal QRS complex. It is The width is less than three boxes. It's basically two small boxes. So it's a normal QRS. Let's look at the interpretation. So basically it's a sinus rhythm with premature atrial contraction. So it is a sinus rhythm. It is run by SA node and somewhere in between there are premature atrial complexes due to ectopic focus. Now pause the video, try to solve this ECG yourself, make a wrong diagnosis, but try to do it yourself. Now coming to the answer, if you look at the P waves, you can easily tell this is a PAC present over here. These are the normal P waves. This is another inverted P wave over here. There is another P wave, inverted P wave over here. So these are the three PACs present after every three sinus beats. So if the PAC, if there is a PAC after every three normal sinus beats, that is called as quadrigeminal PAC. So this is a quadrigeminal PAC pattern. Now let's calculate the heart rate. Now look at the pause after the PAC. The pause after the PAC, the RR interval is deranged. This is an irregularity. So the rhythm is irregular. Let's calculate the heart rate. So it is 300, 150 and slightly more than that. So we have almost 140 beats per minute. In an irregular rhythm, what you do is that you calculate the narrowest RR interval and the widest RR interval. And you should, the better thing is that you should give a certain range that the heart rate is between 300, 150. So it's almost uh, 200 to 140 to 200 beats per minute. So that giving a range is more safer rather than giving a simple number. I've talked about heart rate calculation in detail in my rhythm uh, video.
now let's look at the rhythm rhythm is irregular the p waves are present p waves are married to the qrs complexes let's let's, let's look at the uh, pr interval the pr interval is within one large box that is normal let's look at the qrs complexes the qrs complex is one two three three small boxes so it's technically it's a wide qrs because as i said if if there are three small boxes uh, if the qrs complex is three small boxes wide it's a qrs complex three or more so the uh, every small box is equal to 0 0.04 seconds 0 0.04 multiplied by 3 is 0 0.12 seconds so it's a wide qrs so the interpretation is sinus tachycardia it's a tachycardia the heart rate is greater than 100 there is sinus tachycardia there are sinus beats with quadrigeminal pacs now this is another ecg and you should be easily able to identify where the pac is lying this is a normal p wave normal p wave this is an abnormal p wave this is a pac and look at the pause after it now coming to the management of premature atrial contraction remember whenever a patient's ecg is showing premature atrial contraction it is one of the earlier indicator that that patient is developing any cardiac pathology maybe the patient is having increased stretching of the atria due to congestive heart failure maybe some abnormality is there maybe there is some hypoxia so what you should do is that you should uh, do some diagnostic measures like echocardiography you should look into the heart that what structural abnormality is developing within the heart because most of the time the patient will be asymptomatic when the patient is developing these premature atrial complexes and it is an indicator that patient is going towards an abnormal rhythm generation Premature atrial complexes are usually benign, but they need evaluation. No specific therapy is needed if the patient is asymptomatic. What you do is that you advise the patient to avoid smoking, caffeine, stress, because anything that stimulates these ectopic foci more, smoking, caffeine, stress, they cause increased sympathetic activity and cause increased stimulation of these ectopic foci. If the patient is having persistent symptoms like hypotension or tachycardia, in such patients what you can do is that you can uh, do rate control rate control therapy can be done with beta blockers if the patient is not asthmatic in asthmatics you can you can use calcium channel blocker but in uh, if the patient is not asthmatic you can use beta blockers metoprolol 25 mg bd and you can increase the dose depending upon the patient but the best thing is catheter ablation these uh, ectopic foci are actually burnt with the catheter and these ectopic foci are destroyed which results in resolution of the symptoms now this was all about premature atrial complexes now in the next video we'll be talking about wandering atrial pacemakers multifocal atrial tachycardia atrial flutter atrial fibrillation so make sure the, you follow those videos as well and if you haven't yet watched my previous videos on ecg you must watch those previous videos in previous videos i have talked about how do you perform ecg how do you determine rhythm and rate now we discuss how ectopic foci fight with SA node and produce abnormal morphologies of the P wave. The bigeminal PACs, after every normal sinus rhythm, there is a PAC that is called as a bigeminal PAC. If after every two normal sinus rhythm, there is a PAC that is called as a trigeminal. If after every three PACs, there is a trigeminal rhythm that is called as a quadrigeminal PAC. How do you manage it? No specific therapy is needed, but patient must be evaluated because the patient is developing a structural heart disease. If the patient is having persistent symptoms, you rate control the patient with beta blockers, metoprolol if the patient is not asthmatic. And the best treatment is catheter ablation. If you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on uh, ECG lectures, interpretation made easy. Thank you very much. The link of those videos is given in the description below. Thank you.